shall we begin? Hey guys, it's Rio from AJP, and you are tuning into the first episode of Tune Time. We are going to be tuning the DJI Snail Propulsion System. I've got a Shrike style from X Labs. Um, it's going to be mainly for freestyle whatnot. All right. So the thing about the Snail system or the Snail ESC, I should say, is that it doesn't work with the default settings in Betaflight. So if you're someone new, you just got the Snail system, make sure to set your default PIDs a little bit lower than the default because what will happen is if you try to fly it on default and your quad is super light it's just gonna get these crazy wobbles and shakes when you try to try to do some flips and you're not gonna be able to control it so so this first flight is basically me flying with the pits way down at least for, for what I feel um, is pretty pretty far down from default nothing unflyable but very loose and this is just to kind of see how the quad performs and this strike is a brand new build I have never flown it before so it's you know this is this is a real kind of walkthrough of what I go through when I'm tuning with the, the snail system I've been kind of testing and flying this for about for a few months now and um, I just recently figured out how to how to tune it pretty okay all right so this second flight I've tuned up the P on the pitch a little bit just to get to that point where I can see that wobble and I'm looking for that very specific wobble that the snail has I've also tuned up the eye a bit just because it felt a little loose and as you know tuning eye up will you know let the quad hold a little bit better here I tune it back down by a couple points but I tuned up the P on the pitch again I'm trying to find that that area where that threshold where it's going to be oscillating kind of hear it there I'll probably do a front flip somewhere. There it is. There it is. So that's that's what you're looking for. All right, there it is again. So that's the wobble that I'm looking for. That's the threshold. Threshold. Now I know that 45 is t a little bit too high for the P. You saw it there on the bounce as well. So I'm probably going to tune that down back to the 42, which is what my thoughts were in the beginning. Um, I just wanted to make sure, so that's why I tuned it up to 45 and then now I tune it back down. I tune 30, sorry, the, the P on the roll axis up to 38, two points up. Now I'm just slowly tuning that part up to see if my roll is going to be affected. So a lot of what I do here when I'm testing, when I'm tuning is I try to isolate the three axes. Um, so I'll do a bunch of front, front flips, a bunch of rolls, and then a bunch of yaw spins. And that's just to try to see on each axis which and what is getting, you know, affected. And of course, when you are doing the yaw, yaw spin, you are also rolling a little bit. So it isn't entirely a singular axis when you're doing that, that these, these moves and turns and stuff like that. But it gives you a better idea of what you're doing. Okay, so I've dialed up the the I and the D on the pitch for this. And I think I'm just trying to get a better, more locked in feel for the pitch. Um, so I've 
Yeah, so I'm, so I'm doing a bunch of punch-ups and pointing down and seeing if that's staying where it is and also seeing how well the D is dampening the end of my um, my turns. Here you can kind of see the uh, sorry not the uh, the the roll axis. You can kind of see me wiggling it here on the roll. That's because it's now that I've tuned the P a lot tighter. The roll is really starting to feel a little bit loose. I can feel it. You know, I can um, I notice it a lot more. So now I'm probably bringing it bringing it in to uh, tighten up the the roll axis a little bit. Okay, I guess I haven't realized yet that I needed to change this a little more, but I think I will in a second. I think I'm, I'm really noticing the roll here, as you can see. I'm testing the roll, those, those quick rolls. It's feeling a little bit loose, I want it tighter, so I'm probably going to bump up the I a bunch and the P a little bit. There's still some oscillation there, which means I probably need a little bit more D. Yeah, there we go. So, P's up a little bit, I's up a bunch on the roll axis. The, the relationship between the P and the D is an interesting one because when you bump up the D, you want to bump up the P. When you take down the D, you want to bring down the P because it both kind of relates to each other. The idea is you want at the least amount of tuning possible for the quad to fly really well because more tuning means more work for the processors, etc, etc. You're creating more heat and unnecessary uh, kind of push and pull. So that's why you want to start with the low D to figure out what's really going on with the P and I. At least that's my understanding of it from all the people online and all the guys you know, doing all these pit, pit tutorials. I'm not the best at explaining this stuff, but at least for the snail system, this is what I figured out. Which is, the pits just have to come down a lot, and then you start tuning from there. And then you're going to have an okay time finding the right tune. Um, but I did want to make this video with the beta flight. I've been, I've been flying KISS for maybe half a year. Really awesome board and you know, I just love that thing. But coming back to the beta flight, you know, made me realize it is still possible to get a really nice smooth flight from the beta flight. You can get a really nice tune from that. You can certainly tune up the D and the rates and stuff like that. It is a slightly more robotic in feeling, but I think you can definitely tune that out. And make it fly like the kiss. I mean the hardware on those things are pretty much the same so it's just a matter of knowing what what tune to really do another thing I do want to add is that there are no motor companies that are making propellers and there are no propeller companies that are making motors and ESC's and I mean well Gemfan is dabbling in the motor business but I I'm not sure if they actually design and you know uh, performance test their entire system together. Um, what DJI is doing is they've fully tested this stuff in the lab, wind tested for efficiency, durability, uh, power, all this stuff together. So it's an it's an all-in-one system that works perfectly together. Um, as long as you do, as long as you lower the pits. Just make sure you do that. Don't don't go out and fly with the default because you're gonna have these crazy oscillations and stuff like that. So that's why I wanted to make this, and I hope this has been a big help for a lot of you guys who have purchased the system and and are looking to simplify your workflow and whatnot. So I hope you guys enjoyed this. If you have more questions, feel free to shout out shout out to me in the comments or Facebook, whatever. Um, you know who I am. Thank you for watching. Like and subscribe if you can. And I will see you in the next episode.